Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. Well today we're going to um, try and pack the rear axles to try and get the right end play on those axles. As you, if you watched our previous video you will know that we, when we put the axles back in what we found is that there was insufficient, in fact there was no play, um, meaning that the bearings, the shafts are pushing back out onto the bearings. Um, as they met in the middle and uh, that meant that they, well, it was just too tight for the bearings and of course if you leave it like that, uh, a number of things will happen. Um, most importantly and most significantly you'll probably wear out those outer bearings pretty quickly. Um, so we want to stay away from that as much as we can. Um, we want to avoid that. So what we're going to do today, I've, I've now measured the, the old shims and uh, I'll show you, I'm going to take you over there in a minute and show you quickly what we've got. Um, somebody or whoever um, installed these last time uh, had, to, had to do some significant packing as well. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use all the shims I have to start with um, and see what measure what the in play is then. Um, and if it's then too much, then I know I can reduce it. But I'll show you why in a minute. Let me... Um, so let's get started. I'll take you over there and show you what, I'm, what I've found. Okay, so what I've found, uh, we've got one very thick shim, and I, I do recall when we uh, dismantled the, the uh, axles, we had one side had a single shim in and the other had multiples. Now, what, what, so measuring it, what we've got here is essentially 28 thou, as best I can tell. And then we've got a very thin one, which is basically five thou, and then two which are the same at eleven thou. Now, as you can see, I mean, basically adding these up, you come to twenty-seven point something. Now, we did also have a broken. There was a broken shim in there as well. Uh, I've got the bits here. I don't intend to reuse that because obviously um, that's not very good. But when near is damn it equal to basically if we put this one on one side and these three on the other side along with the two new shims that we've already got there on either side, that's going to basically add almost another thirty thou to uh, to this to well to the axles. Now, as I say, when when I put them all together with just the, the new shims in it it's nowhere near loose enough. It, it's far too tight. So I'm going, shall we call it going big here, um, and we'll see what we get then, and if that's too much. Then we've got a bit of a challenge, because the I guess the alternative would be, if we could get away with it, would be to simply use the two 11s, one on each side. So like that. Um, but I do suspect that that won't be enough. Um, I mean, it might be, but it probably won't be. So, the only other alternative we would have would be to do basically do an uneven um, match between the two sides. So, but, but the first things first, let's first see putting these in. Let's see what play we've got, uh, and then we'll go from there.
Okay, so what we have now, we've got all the shims in. Uh, you, you saw me doing that. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to well, we're going to bump the axle all the way over to that side. So we're going to make sure that this one is as far out as possible. So we're going to knock this one as far that way as possible. And then we need to measure the amount that this one will come back. You can just you can just hear the movement there. All we need to do is measure and make sure that, that firstly that movement should be more than eight thou, and I think it should be at least two thou. So I'll just quickly go and double check the specs and also set up the dial gauge and then we'll take it from there. Okay, I've got the dial gauge, it's a bit of a Heath Robinson setup here, but I've got the dial gauge sitting on the end of that wheel stud there and I hope you can see this dial it's um, let's make sure that that's 100% zeroed there we go, so that's exactly on zero now now all we need to do, I've bumped this I have bumped the axle that way and I'll make sure the other one is as far out as it'll go as well. Now all we need to do is to lever this hub out again. And you can see that's gone to three millimeters. Now, as I said earlier, the specifications are between two and eight thousandths of an inch which in millimetres is near as damn it, 0 0.05 millimetres and 0 0.2 millimetres. So you can see that we now got way too much play. If I show you on this gauge, basically there's the zero, and we need to be a maximum of two, which is way back here. So we've gone f way too far. Now that's a good thing because what it means is that we we've got some um, something to play with now. Previously, there was no movement whatsoever. So, what I'm going to do now, essentially, I need to remove about 28 thou. Now, if you remember, one of those um, shims that we put in this morning, one was 28, two were 11, and one was five. So I need to work out what I'm going to do. I think what I might do is put 11 on one side and the 11 and the 5 on the other side. And that will mean that it's slightly uh, mismatched. It will be about 5 thou bigger on one side. But that should take us back by 28 thou. The alternative would be to remove the 11 and the two 11s and the 5 from one side and just leave the other side at 28 but then we know that that one side is dramatically larger or has more shimming than the other side more so than we want so I think the better way to do it is going to be to to basically split the 11s and put the 5 on one side and take the 28 out so that's what I'm going to do now I'm not going to film that I'll come back when all that's done, and uh, we'll take it take it from there again. Okay, I hope there's a better angle, camera angle there. I hope you can see the dial better. Right, I've had to have a bit of a play. Um, I've I've removed and, and and replaced shims on both sides. What I've ended up with is basically removing from this side, so putting the 28 back on the other side, and removing from this side and 11 uh, and the zero, 0 0.52 zero, so 5.2 thousandths and 11 thousandths so a total of seven, uh, sorry, 16.2 uh, and I think I'm now pretty much in spec so as you can see the dial is on zero this 
this hub is bumped back as far as it'll go. The other side is it's also bumped back. Now, when I come in here and move this, you've got to be very gentle because you don't want the hub to turn. But if I just bump that out, Uh, there we go. We're on 0 0.2 millimeters, which is right at the top end. It's the maximum that we can have. However, when I tighten the, or when I put the rest of the bolts on the back here, remember we've only got three on each side now. When we put the other three on each side. I expect that'll pull a little bit tighter and my, it, it should then drop below 0 0.2. Um, but look, there's no, there, there is no, there's nothing else I can do now. I've taken out as many shims as I can without losing sufficient gap, if that makes sense. Um, I did try that, but it, it hasn't worked. So this is the closest I think I'm going to get uh, to where I need to be. I'm going to tighten up the other six bolts and um, we'll measure again and see where we are once that's done. So once again I'll, I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, I've now uh, uh, replaced all six bolts on each side, torqued them all and uh, let's see where we are. So we're on We're exactly on zero there. And what we'll do is just carefully prise this out. And we're just sitting on two still. So let's just reset that and try again. Uh, that didn't feel right to me. Okay, we're exactly back on zero. No, we're not. Probably shouldn't touch the table, seeing as the meter is attached to that. Yeah, it's turned. Right. Let's just zero that again. There we are, exactly on zero. Let's try this without turning at this time. It's very, very difficult to get it to go without turning. Slightly. Yeah, we're on two. Okay, well, look, that's um, that's as good as it's going to get. I don't have any other combination of shims that I can think of that will get us any closer. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Well, there you go. It's um, it's a tedious job. Uh, you do have to. Unfortunately, I can't, I mean, I'm not aware of any other way of doing it. You just have to take them off, put the shims in, change the shims, put them back, torque it, measure it, and go from there. Um, it would have been better if my dial gauge was perhaps um, graduated more finely, um, and also if um, my micrometer was in millimeters, um, because the well, it just would have been easier if everything was the same uh, measurement uh, or the same scale, if that makes sense. Anyway, look, it's um, I'm happy with that. Um, you know, the requirement is to have a measurable dis uh, measurable movement um, and essentially only just measurable, which I think is pretty much what we've got. As I say, we're on 0.2 millimeters, which is about 8 thou. Um, it's just below 8 thou. Um, so we're right on the right on the limit there, um, as in the maximum limit. Um, but given I mean, given the age of the of the tractor and 
the combination of, of shims that I've got, I think that's basically the closest we're going to get. Now the interesting thing will be to obviously continue with the restoration, get the restoration done, drive it around a little bit, take the wheels off and measure it again. And I suspect uh, we'll find that it might have increased about then, meaning that we may then need to remove another shim. So that's probably what will happen um, and that's, that's my expectation and that's, uh, that's my intention. Um, we'll probably, as I say, drive it around a bit, let everything just settle, everything loosen up and then measure it again and probably find that we need to remove uh, another shim because it's, uh, the, the, the gap has increased. But anyway, that's it for now, uh, for, certainly for this video. Uh, the next job is going to be reinstalling the brakes. Uh, you may recall, it's a long, long time ago now, but um, uh, in the video where we removed the brakes, we found the brake shoes were absolutely fine. Uh, they looked like they hadn't been, you know, they haven't been, been in there long and they, they seem to be in very good order. So we've not bought replacements. We're going to be reading, you know, using the same ones. I've also measured the drums uh, as best I can and as far as I can tell they are as close to in round as, as, as required and they're certainly not uh, worn beyond uh, the specification. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to get the brakes operating nicely. Um, the, the main pr issue I had with the brakes was actually in the pedal movement, um, which is not surprising given what we found when we needed to remove all of those cross, the, the knuckle of the cross shaft and um, the, the, um, the lever that runs inside that knuckle was uh, certainly not very free. Um, anyway, so I'm hopeful that we can get, uh, we'll get some good brakes on this tractor. Um, so that'll be the next video that will hopefully, hopefully be later this week again. Um, depending on how things play out. Uh, I've got a couple of things that I need to get done this week, other things, um, but we'll see. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get another video done. If not by Friday, then certainly uh, over the weekend, next weekend. So look forward to that and uh, stay tuned. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.